worthy of every song we could ever be. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Live for you. a humid day in the neighborhood <clears throat> but it's the good day God gave us so we're thankful for it I'm vertical taking in sustenance so that's a good thing I have only one announcement this morning since it's the summer there's not a lot going on but um, next Sunday is July the 4th I will be here just letting you know I will be here do with that what you want <laughs> Anyway, if you were here yesterday for <clears throat> Ron's, uh, Betty's um, memorial service, it was a beautiful day. The parking lot was slam full. It was a good thing and a good show of support for Ron. So thank you all who came. 
Let us begin this morning. We gather this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. O oh God, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. <clears throat> Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the bread from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you have God's mercy, and you are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our first hymn, one of my favorites. All are welcome.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. We continue with the readings. The first reading is Lamentations chapter 3, starting at verse 22. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul that seeks him, it is good to the one that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good to it is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. This is the Lord, word of the Lord. Thanks be, to God. Thanks be to God. Please read in unison with me Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, and joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and I have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. The second reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness, genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began this last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For the eagerness is there. The gift is acceptable according to what one has not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in, a, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, 
and the one that had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone out from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them, no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <coughs> this is an interesting sto pair of stories here, and it's interesting how Mark nests this woman with a hemorrhage into the story of Jairus and, and his daughter. And there's a reason I think Mark does this. The first thing we, he, we hear is Jairus, first of all, coming to Jesus, falling down at his feet, and begging him for his daughter's life, and asking him to come lay his hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Those two words are very, very important in the early church's understanding of life as a community, as life, as followers of Jesus. They are the Greek words sothe and seste. They both have meaning that, mean, that, has, that is attributed to salvation, in the early church and their understanding of life as followers of Jesus. To be made well is to have your sins forgiven and to, be, and to live is to be given eternal life and know that you don't have to worry about death when it comes time for it. So Mark is sowing a little story here. He's making a point here about all of this business. <clears throat> and with these two stories together, <clears throat> he's going to emphasize being made well and life being made well by the woman who comes and touches Jesus' cloak, and she's made well. Now, this woman has spent everything she's got, and for her to spend that much money for physicians over 12 years, she had to have been a person of means to begin with. She probably was in the same social circles as Jairus, who was a leader of the synagogue. Jairus was well off, because by the time they get there to see his daughter, we see weeping and wailing. They've already hired professional mourners. And the only people who could hire professional mourners were people who had money. 
So Jairus and this woman probably <clears throat> ran in the same circles until this woman became ill, at which time she became unclean and therefore was put out of the synagogue and also put off by herself and also removed from her family, most likely. She was not allowed to eat with them because she was unclean. She was kept by herself. And the fact that she's roaming around in this crowd is, uh, is rather, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, scandalous. The fact that she's even there is scandalous. But she's desperate. She has exhausted everything else in her life. She can't be a part of community. She can't go to worship. What else is she going to do? She's heard about Jesus. She's heard about what he's capable of doing. Perhaps she heard about the, men, the paralytic that he healed earlier in the gospel. And perhaps she heard about the withered hand of the man that Jesus restored. Just by touching him. So she comes to Jesus. She places all of her trust in Jesus alone. She crawls up behind him and touches him and is made well. What a day that must have been for her. What a day that must have been for her. Jesus is on his way to Jairus' place, right? They come up and say, well, she's dead. No need to bother the rabbi anymore. And Jesus said, don't worry about it. It's all right. Just believe. That's hard to do sometimes when we find ourselves in these very difficult situations. Whenever we find ourselves desperate and in despair over the loss of a loved one, it's kind of hard to believe sometimes. It's kind of hard to say, okay, Jesus, I know you got this. It's hard for us to let go of the control that we think we have in this world. The poor old Jairus, he's got nothing left. He's the leader of the synagogue. He's the big man in, on campus. He's the big man in town. He's got power. He's got wealth. And yet he too is driven to his knees in front of Jesus, begging for his daughter's life. He and this woman end up being made equal in this place and in this time. Jesus says, let's go on. And they get there, and he tells them she's just asleep. Now, this is another theological term from that those early part of the church. St. Paul talks about it as well. He says, it's not that we die, it's as if we fall asleep until the resurrection. And so Jesus is making this statement. She's not dead. She is asleep. And he goes in and he raises her. The sad thing is she's going to have to die again, just like Lazarus. And I wonder sometimes about all those people who saw this happen, who saw her die, and then saw Jesus raise her from the dead. I wonder if some of them were still around the second time she died, and they remembered that she had been raised from the dead by Jesus, and I wonder if they recounted the story and told in amazement what had happened to this young girl. And yet, <clears throat> she dies again simply because she is mortal. And we all suffer that fate. We are mortal. And that is the problem that we have that Jesus came to fix and Jesus came to, to heal us of. And that is our mortality. By his death and his resurrection and the gift of his life to us, we have eternal life, and therefore we have our sins forgiven, and therefore that mortality, which was our problem, is no longer a problem. We don't have to worry about death. We're just going to fall asleep for a little while until Jesus comes in the resurrection, and we all are raised again to stand together and sing the praises of the Lamb as we read about yesterday in Revelation chapter 7. What I want you to notice probably most importantly, I think, in this, and especially in our day and age where we are ex experiencing so much polarization among people, people not being able to talk to one another because they don't agree about things politically, they don't agree, agree about things societally or culturally, Jesus is the uniter in this situation. He brings this woman and this man, both who have been well off, who had everything they needed, but both came to need Jesus, and they both came and fell at his feet. 
Jesus brings them together again. And then Jesus tells them to feed her. And this woman who is healed is allowed to go back to her family and involve herself again in the family meals, which are very, very important because they give you your identity and who you are in those days. Jesus is the one who unites us, who brings us together in our poverty, in our despair, in our de <clears throat> whatever, in our whatever we're experiencing. However we may think, none of that matters. What matters, folks, is the fact that we are all baptized children of God. We are all united as the communion of saints by the life and death and resurrection of Jesus and the Spirit of Christ that's given and poured into our hearts. And today he invites us again to this meal, which is a sign of that unity given to us in this moment as he comes one more time and feeds us with his body and blood so my sisters and brothers when you find yourself in despair fall down at jesus feet i think you'll find a whole lot of people there too and you'll find out that even though you might disagree you can still love one another you can still care for one another you can still agree on the fact that jesus is the Christ.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of hope, the ministry of your church extends across borders, from nearby neighbors to far and distant countries. Accompany all those who labor eagerly in service to the gospel that through your good news all might experience transformation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the land that provides our food. Guard all species of plants and animals from harsh changes in climate, and empower us to protect all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, we pray for nations and their leaders. Give them a spirit of compassion and steer them towards a fair distribution of resources that none among us would have too much or too little. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, your touch has the power to make us whole. We pray for those suffering from physical or mental illness. Embrace those who are sick. Surround them with your unwavering presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly and all those gathered together in worship. Revive our spirits, renew our relationships, and rekindle our faith that we might experience resurrection in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, hear the prayers of your people as we lift them up to you by name, out loud or in our hearts. We pray for all who are on our prayer list. Visit them with your healing spirit. We pray for the faculty, staff, and students of Kennesaw State University as they continue their mission of education. And we pray for our sister con congregation, Mount Zion AME Church. Bless and preserve them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who place themselves in harm's way as they minister to their neighbors in need. Guide, strengthen, and protect them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth and Bishop Kevin. Give them the wisdom and clarity of vision they need to lead our church in this time of pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. God of justice and racial profiling. Uh, God of justice. The racial profiling of people and innocent victims of racist attacks continues to plague this nation. As a church, we have made commitments to speak up in condemning racism in all forms, but our actions must be as strong as our words. 
lead us to advocate and be a voice for those voices that have been taken from them. Bring comfort, peace, and hope as we continue to struggle for cleansing and justice for all of your children. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the faithful ancestors in every age of those that have pointed us towards you. Envelop them in your love that we may be reunited, be reunited with one another in the last days. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you always. <clears throat> Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to, to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for your life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is being given up for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is being shed for you and for all people 
for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> With this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. <clears throat> o God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. And with Betty and your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, <clears throat> most blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. And now we're bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who bears away the sin of the world. Thanks be to God.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you and strengthen you in his grace to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Bread of life, we received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Before I send you, um, I also want to thank you on behalf of my mother, Karen Werner, and my family for all the uh, prayers and support for the passing of my sister. So uh, thank you so much. It's a blessing to be a member here and a member of the family of FULC. And on that, go in peace. You are the body of Christ.